Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. You know, I like to begin with the things that talk about what prevents us from awakening joy or being fully in the moment so we can celebrate life and even experience the ups and downs, or as my friend says, feel the feels. Uh, and that means you have to recognize negative emotion, which means there has to be awareness or mindfulness. I don't want to formalize it by saying meditate, but sitting in silence, obviously slowing down enough that things don't pass by so quickly that you don't get a good glimpse at them. So we say name it to tame it. That's why at the beginning, you know, 95% is supposed to be the actual experience of it, and 5% is the mental tag so that you realize what's happening. That's what's going to prevent the nosedive into chaos, as they say. So even though we all have moments where we're angry, pissed off Buddha, sad, sad Buddha, wandering, distracted Buddha, bored, bored Buddha, states of mind, they all arise and they all pass away. Don't take it personally. So first is to allow and accept what it is. Resistance locks in the feeling rather than allowing it to undergo the natural process of change. It's all impermanent. It won't last. So you just give permission for it to be just as it is, because it is as it is. And then you investigate how interesting this is. Let me see how it's expressing itself. Don't try to figure it out. It just creates more thinking. And then you realize the part that's aware of something isn't the thing that it's aware of. Your awareness of fear isn't the fear. And that's where non-identification comes in. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're feeling, it's a human emotion. Let it arise. Let it pass away. None of the feelings are eternal. Let it go. The alchemist. I want to get back into telling stories instead of just doing Dharma raps. The alchemist is one of my favorites from the Burma. Once there was a young woman I want to marry. And um, the father said, okay, fine. You know, give you a dowry for this. But what happened was that the, the man uh, squandered the dowry right away. And the daughter went to the father and said, listen, I have to tell you. I didn't realize about this, but my, my husband, he, he claims to be an alchemist. He's trying to like find the secret of turning base metal into gold. And that's why he used all the money. The father said, okay, I understand. Have him come and talk to me. So the wife said, hey, my, my father wants to talk to you. And he figured, all right, he's going to give me what for, right? So he went to him and he had that sour look on his face. What is it? He said, my daughter tells me that you're an alchemist. Yeah, what of it? I'm an alchemist too. You are? Really? I didn't know that. Yes. And I'm just about to discover the secret, except I need one vital ingredient, except I think that I'm too old to be able to work it out myself. Would you want to help me? He says, of course I would. What is it? Well, I've discovered that if we can get two pounds of the banana powder that's found under the banana leaf every time it grows, it's just that it's a speck. It's so small, it'll take a long time. Says, well, I'll help you do that. All right, I'll give you money to buy a couple of fields where we can plant bananas, and then we'll collect the banana dust till we have two pounds. Fine? The young man says, fine. So he gives him the money. He buys the field. He plants the banana pants. And it goes on for takes a couple of years to do this. And finally, he's collected two pounds of this banana powder dust. So he runs to the old man and says, I got it, I got it. Come on, now let's do the, the secret formula. He says, wait a second, we've got to bring my daughter here. What do we need to bring her for? I'm telling you, bring her here. So he gets the daughter and he takes the two pounds of banana dust. And before he does anything, he says, oh, by the way, in the last two years when we've been growing all this stuff um, and he's been get, gathering the banana powder, what did you do with the with bananas? He says, well, I sold them in the market. And did you make any money? She takes out two bags of gold and puts it down. Yeah, I made all this money. He grabs dirt, lets it run through his hands, and says, from base metal comes gold. And at first the husband said, oh, you wily. But then he realized what he was saying. And he bowed down. And he realized magic only exists when you're a child. Some deus ex machina is going to come in and save your life. But as you get older, you understand work, labor, the sweat of your own brow is what turns base metal into gold. So don't fear to get dirt under your fingernails. Get right in there. Be the worker, as we say. Yoga is all about learning to serve other people. Be the worker, and then you'll see how your life will change, and you'll be able to extract, like an alchemist, the gold from the base metal of daily life. 
Peace.